Hey, what's going on with y'all niggas, man? My name is Devin Wills. And when I'm not putting military grade mace in the simple perfume bottles, I'm here getting these jokes for y'all. Wait a minute, that's 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 not even my fucking joke. But I guess it goes into the theme of today's video. First of all, I hope y'all had a great Thanksgiving. Now, this video right here is something I'm kind of excited to get into because this is about Carlos Mencia. Now, anybody who knows about Carlos Mencia knows that in recent years, he has gained a reputation for being a notorious joke thief. And um, today, we're going to look at the timeline, the Carlos Mencia joke thief timeline. So I'm very interested in seeing this. Um, you know, and the crazy thing is, I like Carlos Mencia. I think he's, to be honest, I think he's a funny dude. Like, it, his delivery is amazing. Even though the material, it wasn't his. It, He's a funny dude to me. I actually enjoy his. I actually enjoy his comedy, even though, you know, you know, I watch his comedy and I can tell that it's not really original. I still enjoy it. I, I know y'all can hate me for it, but I still find it funny. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna check this out. I'm excited to get into this. Let's get it. Today, we're going to talk about the Carlos Mencia joke thief timeline. And if this All is right. something he can come back from. Welcome to that's another I, episode really of Catching You Up with... Not a, it's a good time. I would like to thank the executive producer of this episode, Wolfski Comedy. If you would like to show big baller support and become an executive producer of this show, you can click the Patreon link in the YouTube description below. And also, please take this time to subscribe, rate this video, comment on it, share with a friend. It all helps with the algorithm. So today, we're going to be looking at a couple things, but mainly the Mark Marin interview with Carlos Mencia in 2010. I want to say that okay. that was the first time that Carlos had publicly addressed the joke thieving, but actually in a documentary called I Am Comic, Carlos had a couple minutes where he just kind of went off and owned the whole joke stealing thing. I saw that documentary. Are going to ask, why did they interview Carlos? I've seen this documentary Carlos. many times. Carlos is a joke thief. Carlos steals jokes, and we know this. And not, listen to me, and look at me when I tell you this with all honesty. If you think that I steal jokes, fuck yeah, you're right. Of course I fucking steal jokes. Are you out of your fucking mind? When I come to a comedy club, you better run, bitch. You better get the fuck off stage. Because if anything you say is even remotely funny, I'm going to make it mine. And all I'm going to do is say Mexican in the front. Fucking why? Carlos Mencia went on WTF with hey, Mark man, he said it. in May of 2010. I feel like he was being sarcastic, but he still said it. Two back-to-back -back appearances. In the podcast, Mark starts off solo like Mark and Murray. just kind of explains how Joe Rogan had called out Carlos Mencia for stealing one of Ari Shafir's jokes, as well as a couple other jokes. And not only that, but how this was a consistent pattern from Carlos. That happened at the world-famous comedy, comedy store, store on the Sunset Strip and the release of that video changed Carlos Mencia's and Joe Rogan's careers forever. To say this video was culturally significant in the comedy world is an understatement. But for those of you that haven't seen it, back in the day, Brian Redman used to be Joe Rogan's videographer exclusively. Now, this video was either made from something okay. that Brian Redman recorded or footage that he found that was uploaded to the internet. But essentially what he made out of that footage was a hit piece on Carlos Mencia, calling him out for stealing jokes, showing the similarities between Carlos's premises and some other comedians' premises, and Similar overall just too. really shitting on him. The footage that was recorded was Carlos Mencia on stage at the comedy store being actively called out by an agitated Joe Rogan. He went up on stage and they just straight up had a yelling match at each other. And that video gets interspliced with a whole bunch of videos that demonstrate how Carlos could be perceived as a joke thief. Joe Rogan uploaded and released the video and was banned from the comedy store shortly thereafter. The store right. had a no filming rule that allegedly Joe Rogan had violated by uploading this video. At the time, Carlos okay. Mencia was a bigger draw than Joe Rogan. And by uploading this video, Joe had ruffled quite a few feathers. The comedy store had banned him. He was dropped by his agents at Gersh. To fast forward really quickly, it's nearly objective that Joe Rogan's return to the comedy store is what sparked the most recent golden era of the LA comedy scene. The banning signified comedy clubs siding with joke thieves that were okay with it as long as they sold tickets. And Joe's return signified the yeah. changing of the guard. But that's a video that we'll cover another time. Now, 
Let's rewind back to 2010 when Mark Marin was interviewing Carlos Mencia on WTF. Marin's solo intro on the podcast recounts Carlos stealing bits from Damn. George Lopez. Mark Marin looked like a fucking witch now. Marin states that it's no secret how publicly hated Carlos Mencia is, and that it's also no secret to Carlos how much he's hated. And that that's kind of the starting point of what he was going to talk about with him. By the way, in the garage here at the Cat Ranch, Carlos Mencia, the infamous Carlos Mencia. Infamous. You've become kind of infamous. The guy literally sitting on his door, on the door of the passenger side, holding like a flip, pointing it at me, just yells out, You fucking suck! You're the worst fucking piece of shit ever! Fuck you! And I'm just like, really? Is that necessary, bro? <laughs> Once they start talking, they kind of start getting along really well. Kind of like how you'd expect two comics that are in the business to get along. Carlos tells Mark about the first time he went on stage, and he just went up with, I think, one original joke and a whole bunch of jokes from a joke book that he recited from memory, and he crushed. How surprising is that to hear? Now, we need to address this because, you know, I, I want to give you an opportunity to explain this because I watched that movie, I Am Comic, mm -hmm. and I saw in your eyes, you were like, fuck yeah, I did it, I did it. Right. But I also saw the pain, and now I talk to you about sure. this, and this has got to be killing you. Killing so you. let's clear it up. I mean, what happened? So here's what happened. I'm at the... You're telling me the well, truth? Going, going back. No, seriously. Going back, he was a buddy of mine. Well, We're I mean, friends. let's talk, we talk... Right, okay. And, and, and I'll, I'll set it up. You talk about you and so, Rogan, and then we'll talk about the, th the stealing. At the comedy store, I would hear, hey, man, um, Eddie Griffin's pissed at you because uh, he said that you did a bit of his. I would walk up to him. He did, he did do a bit of Eddie's. There was a bit that I do that you did, or Mooney. Hey, Mooney, somebody said that you do this bit and I do this bit. This is what I do. What's your bit? Oh, brother, it's cool. You know what I mean? So, and, and the weird thing about the comedy store is everybody, you know, there's about nine or ten guys a night doing the same, roughly the same subject matter. Correct. Mencia then shockingly defends his reason for why his joke was so similar to George Lopez's. I wrote a Taco Bell joke, yeah. and it was the most obvious fucking joke of all time. It was when they created the Enchirito. And it was basically, what did they get an enchilada to fuck a burrito? Yeah. It wrote itself. Yeah. It literally wrote well, itself. Well, that's, that's actually probably that's fair. what they meant. So that's fair. I did a joke, and then George Lopez came up to me. And this was the biggest mistake in my career. Yeah. I can now say that that was ego-driven, a lot of fear. But he came up to me, and he's like, that's my joke. And I was like, bro, it's, it's a Taco Bell joke. You can't be a Latino and claim Taco Bell as, as your subject. <laughs> yeah, and he fair. was like, that's my joke. Now, today, I would have looked at George and said, you know what, bro? You've been doing it longer than I have. Out of respect. Go ahead. Keep the joke. Yeah. But I was a young comic. Yeah. I didn't know that I was going to write anything funnier than that. You were going to fight for the entry. Fuck yeah, man. Uh -huh. That's a great joke. What but are you yeah, talking about? Yeah. That, that's the one that's going to put me on HBO. <laughs> Fuck you. You know what I mean? He also defends the overlap in thinking with the Ari joke that he was alleged to steal. So then that's when the joke about the fans, which like 15 of us did, you know, yeah. the, the Mexicans yeah, building yeah. the fans. Right. So then Ari Shafir was like, you took that joke for me. Because one time I opened for you, I'm like, but you've never opened for me. Oh, no, no. One time I performed before you because you let me do a spot before you, and I did that joke. I'm like, do you, do you think I was watching you? Kind of an interesting defense from an allegedly prolific joke. Mm, he claims okay. that the Bill Cosby joke that know, he was caught don't... ripping off right. was the nail in the coffin for him. When that came out, that brought real legitimacy to the argument. Who's arguing? Up. Oh. To the argument of the people that say, look, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, yeah, because with this other joke, 10 people did it. Yeah. It was almost like the wall. Yeah, the wall. Everybody yeah. does it. But yeah. with that joke, it was like, oh, dude, you people refuse to believe that I didn't see the joke. What I say is, do I come off as that retarded? Do I come off as somebody dumb enough to take a joke from an iconic performance and think that nobody I mean... would see it after having a reputation for years of fucking thievery. I don't take jokes, but if I did, I'd take it from some fucking mook that nobody knows. I wouldn't do it from fucking Bill Cosby. He then went on to say- I mean, but at the same time, you still got the same fucking jokes as other famous comedians. So I'm thinking, man, they're getting along much better than I thought they would. And they start wrapping up the episode, and then it kind of cuts into an outer lewd with Mark, where he just says, Look, man, fucking things were weird, man. I feel like he was trying to take advantage of me, man. <laughs> That's a terrible Mark Merritt impression. but Okay, so there you have that. After I sat with Carlos in the garage, I felt something felt wrong. I felt that I, I, somehow or another I was being used in a way, and it was it was disconcerting to me. 
So I had to do some more homework, and I talked to Al Madrigal. I talked to a few guys, you know, who who didn't. You know, they, people aren't chiming in, in in the way that like you know, fuck him or this or that. What I got from people was like, yeah, you should do a little more research here. You know, this is a little bigger than you think it is. And for that, I have to say that is very punk rock of Mark. In most cases, it's a little bigger than you think it is. I like how that sounds. Some guess that you didn't really respect, and it didn't go the way that you thought it would. You would more often than not just decide to scrap the episode or call them and be like, hey, you know, there's this, that, and the other happened, and I really think that we should re-record something. But Mark was like, nah, I'm uploading this, and just so you know, the next episode I'm going to be talking to some comedians about Carlos, and they'll have Carlos back on. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. I mean, podcasting is still I mean, in the wild, hey. wild west phase where there's not a lot of approvals to get through in order to record something that you want to record. But back then, I think it was literally just Mark and one of his producers. It's an audio-only podcast, so the production isn't so crazy where it's like, fuck, we got to fire up the cameras again? Like, uh, do we have the team? This was just Mark flipping a switch, recording the audio, and having another sit-down interview with some more comedians, including Carlos Mencia for a second time. The podcast starts off with a that's, quick that's interview. The way, that's Willie the way podcasts is supposed what to be. What I think happened to Carlos, man, is is he never got into writing ever i used to go over his house and i used to say hey man let's write <laughs> and then we wouldn't write he was one of those guys that would love to s sit in back of the comedy club and watch other comics and like I, what i think happens man is subconsciously you're gonna pick up material man then he has a recorded segment with latino comic steve trevino I, my first week ever to headline i get booked at the ontario improv and i'm super stoked because it's like man real money now you yeah, know you're getting yeah. paid you know, that bump in pay, and, and this is the real deal, you know. Mencia shows up, okay. and right before I go on stage, he goes, hey, I want to go up, do a few minutes. Uh, and I go, absolutely, right? I walk on stage, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Mencia. He walks on stage and does two hours. I never go up. And your name's on the marquee. And my name's on wow. the marquee. It's my first week to headline. Then we get over wow. to Carlos coming back onto the show. That's a, that's I didn't a want to sandbag Mencia or you know take what he said and mash it up with other people's things. After I talked to uh, Willie Barcena and Steve Trevino, I was in the awkward position where I had to contact Carlos again to tell him we needed to do some follow up because I know things now that I didn't know then, and and I want you to answer to them specifically. So I texted Carlos, basically saying, look, I got to do some follow-up questions. Why don't we do it on the phone? Because I personally didn't want to have to do it face-to-face. -face. I admit that. I was hoping we could do a phoner. But within minutes, Carlos said, uh, texted me back. He said, I just landed at LAX. I'll come from the airport. And what we get next is a way oh, more shit. honest okay. exchange said, between the said, two. I'm coming they right are now. really getting into the nuts and bolts of these accusations. All right. Now, first off, I got a personal thing that I didn't bring right, up before, it. but let's it came it. up at, you know, numerous times, and mm -hmm. I, I want to know what you know where you what you say about it. Now, one time I was doing the improv, I was headlining. Yeah. And you came and bumped me and did like 45, 50 minutes. Yes. And then I, I left because right. I was like, you know, fuck that. Fuck, fuck him. him. Right. Okay. Now I see that this is a pattern that, you know, you bump headliners and you do an hour to two hours. Yeah. Now, is this a territorial thing? Are you saying, fuck you? This is, you know, I'm, I'm the boss. Be honest. I'll be honest with you, man. It, it's my only way of d dealing with how hateful you know what I mean? So you're saying that you do it, you do it out of spite. Yeah, I felt like, especially guys okay. like you who came from that okay. different school. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Of you comedy, wanted to school me? Who came to <laughs> not school you as much as like fuck you? Okay. I am. I, my comedy isn't to be shit on. But I, I didn't personally shit on you. Oh no, no, you never did. But you just had. You were making an example. But dude, they discuss how these scenarios could have possibly happened unintentionally. So let me just ask him: Is there a chance that you absorb this shit? And you don't know that you're you're doing similar things or doing people's bits? With openers, no. With headliners, possibly. It, I won't even no, name I, names. I, okay, you... Okay, now that is a thing that can very possibly happen. That's actually happened to me before. You know, sometimes you hear another comedian's joke. And you hear it and it goes into your head. And you forget that somebody else said it. And it comes back to you as an original idea. And you think you thought of it. That happened to me before. It's called Cryptonesia, right? There's a there's a video on it. They made a video about it. It's called Cryptonesia. It's where you can accidentally take somebody's material and you forget that somebody else did it and you think you came up with it. 
just like I remember one day I watched Sam J, right? She's a lesbian comedian. She's on Netflix. I watched her special. It was hilarious. Her special 3 a.m. is hilarious. And, you know, I watched it. Um, forgot about some things. And a little while later, I got, I decided I wanted to be a comedian myself. I started writing jokes. I came up with this joke about the word bitch. About how the word bitch is, is so versatile. It can be used as an adjective. It can be used as a noun. It can be used as a verb. You know what I'm saying? It can apply to men, women, anybody. The, the word bitch. And the punchline of the joke was, bitch is universal. And so I go, I thought I just came up with a, and so in my mind, I just came up with a brilliant joke about the word bitch. And a little while later, I go back and watch Sam J's special, 3 a.m., and I was like, oh, she the one that said that bitch is universal part. I, I didn't come up with that. Damn. So, you know, it happens. It happens to the best of us. It happens to almost everybody. You accidentally absorb things, you know. But in this case, if it happens that many times, it's got to be intentional. If it... You know what I'm saying? Do I think that Carlos could have possibly accidentally stolen someone's material and forgot that he got it from somebody? Yeah, that's possible. But if it happens that many times, bro, that many times, I don't know, man. Let's get back into You've it. You've denied that. The, With the, young guys, yeah. most of the time when they do a bit, yeah. I yeah. did the bit about the Cougars 15 years ago. So sometimes these guys have never seen that bit that I did in 1992 about, you know, having sex with a 40-year-old woman. Carlos talks about some Paul Mooney premises that he might have stepped on. And the way that you know that this is a more authentic conversation than the first appearance that Carlos had is that both Mark and Carlos kind of go on a roller coaster of raising their voice and getting upset and emotional and then kind of coming back down. You know, there's like some of the guys said, like, you know, if, if Carlos would just, you know, do his shit, he knows how to do shit that, you know, I, it seems that a lot of this stuff is hung up on shit that anybody could do. They can't necessarily do it like you, but a lot of this discussion is about shit that is just fucking topical comment. You know, I'm, I don't even know why I'm getting angry, angry in, 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 in this conversation, just that. But it's really nice to see the human side of Mark Marin, to see the human side of Carlos Mencia, and seeing them just kind of talk about things like two grown men. It's, it's hard for me to fucking give in to that because it brings in so much pain, bro. All right. Well, let's not do it. Let's just say You know thank what I'm you. saying? I think you've... I think you've uh, uh, but I do want people to know that, that I feel that pain. I do, you know... That I, I, I felt I it for do. a couple minutes. Yeah, and then I get out of it. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you don't want to live in it. That's why we're comics. Right. That's... <laughs> I know, but you know what I'm saying. It's I like I go there and I'm like, fuck, man, I'm that it's guy. overwhelming. Especially comics at the comedy store who don't like me. I have a couple of friends who want to come and beat the shit out of you, for real. And I tell them not to, because for whatever reason, let, let me not interpret my own behavior. I just want to go to the comedy store, and I know the guys, and I'm just going to knock them the fuck out and tell them to stop. And I'm like, nah, bro, that's not what I want. They talk for about an hour, and then Mark has another outer lewd where he's really dissecting whether or not Carlos Mencia deserves all this hate. But the interesting thing to me is that this guy is just, he's wired differently. Uh, did he steal? I, I think so. I mean, I you can make your own opinion. Did he know he did? I, I don't know. This is a guy who we talked to initially that his first experience doing stand-up was from a joke book. His first impulse was to, uh, I don't know true. how to do this. I, I, I'm funny. I want to be funny. I, I got to find some jokes. He doesn't write. That was clear. Throughout this entire time, Carlos's reputation is not recovering from this big hit of stealing jokes. Almost 14 years after the original video had been uploaded, Carlos Mencia goes on to Tiger Belly and I saw talks that with Bobby Lee, Belly. who he took on the road with him quite a lot. There's about a 30-minute chunk of the podcast where Bobby brings up Carlos stealing jokes. I believe that, you know, there are certain things that you didn't consciously or unconsciously do, but I think that there were some elements of your act that were um, too similar to other people's acts and re regardless if you're conscious about it or not you know it is crazy. what it is and you get this from willie barsena like, from steve four, trevino five, and from bobby four, lee these comics that have worked closely with carlos don't think that he's a bad person 
Bobby really sympathizes with Carlos and explains how unfair this entire situation is. It is odd to me that, um, you know, that you're in prison for 14 years, right? Without really a lane, you know, to get out because at the end of the day, you, I think you've been in prison for way too long. We then have a clip from Flagrant with Andrew Schultz and Akash Singh interviewing Joe Rogan about the Carlos Mencia incident. I don't like trash and fellow comedians. I no. really don't. Did that change after Mencia? You felt a little yes, bad? Yes, 100%. <laughs> really? So. You yeah. felt bad about During it. the moment of it, I realized how much negativity it creates. So the question is, can Carlos come back from this? I don't think it's ruled out. Carlos now, needs through to the go old channels, Joe Rogan. I don't think Carlos has a chance. But what Carlos needs to understand is that although he conquered a machine close to 20 years ago, there is now a new machine to conquer. I can't imagine that if Carlos uploaded a YouTube special, that comedians actually praised and got behind and they're like, hey, my jokes weren't in that special. I think that Carlos could actually make a comeback if he wanted to. I think the internet is much more forgiving than people think. I mean, just look at some of the comics from the last four or five years that have been canceled, yet are still somehow back at work, putting out specials. Take all this with a grain of salt. Who knows what version of Carlos's stories are true? Who knows if he's as big of an asshole as people think he is? Maybe he's a sweetheart. But what I know for sure is that Carlos is extremely scarred from this situation. What do you guys think? Is there a way for Carlos to come back? I Let think he needs to go on Joe Rogan. I would like to take this time to I think thank he can make I think he can make things right if he goes right on now, Joe Rogan. Without their constant support month after month on Patreon, it'd be much harder to put out these episodes consistently week after week. And if you want to join the producers guild of catching you up with not a, it's over time. Then hit that link in the YouTube description and join my Patreon. Now would be a good time to bring up again how you should subscribe right now. Comment on this video, rate it, and All right, yeah. Make sure to go subscribe to his channel because uh, so far from what I've seen, this is some good content that he's making. Yeah, link in the description for the original video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to like and subscribe to the original creator. And I'm out this hoe.